go up. For this trading card fan we're going to talk to here and game lover, it was a dream come true when he took over as the owner of his beloved local gaming store, Dolly's Toys and Games, which has been uh, something he's been visiting since he was a kid in the mid-90s. William Chong joins us this morning to share the heartwarming story. William, welcome to BT. Good morning, man. How you doing? Good morning. Good morning. William, what a story, okay? You love a store so much, you end up being the owner, and the owner sort of chose you to take it over. How did this all happen? Talk to us about yeah, it. Yes, so... <laughs> Um, Dolly's Toys and Games has been uh, uh, a huge part of my life. Uh, I started coming here when I was eight years old. And then um, over the years, I've uh, met a lot of friends. I have two brothers that we play cards with together. And um, when the owner was retiring about five years ago, uh, he approached us to, to take over for him. And uh, yeah, here we are now. It's become a big part of my life now. That's so cool. So so what, what's, what was the biggest surprise about owning a place? Like walking in to one of these places. One, one of my favorite spots growing up was honestly the memorabilia place in my neighborhood. Oh. And I wasn't a huge comic book guy, but just for the sports memorabilia, just the hockey cards, the baseball cards, absolutely loved it. Mm -hmm. Every time I went in there, uh, I just I, I just walk around for hours. What's it like visiting as a kid compared to owning the spot? Yeah. Um, I, 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 obviously I'm a lot older now, so um, it, it's funny that like it's been almost 25 years since I first started coming here. And you see a lot of the same trans uh, tr like experiences that I have with kids that are a lot younger now, and it, it's kind of carried over even decades. So um, even though the cards have changed and people are playing more video games, but overall, the interaction that I have with a lot of people in the store, especially young collectors, has, has kind of remained the same over time. So it's always so interesting to see that despite, you know, with all this technology and all these opportunities to kind of just stay home, um, people are still coming out and collecting cards and playing cards. And I mean, not much has probably changed since, since you were visiting, uh, you know, at the store when you were younger. Let the record show, William, as the oldest of three brothers. Like Sid, you're the only one that got up for this interview. So we thank you. <laughs> They're sleeping in. What else? Let's get into your eBay store because you had to pivot like many people did when you had to close your doors down for a minute, right? So how, what's, yeah. like, what, how does that work? The eBay store, what are people buying? Is there like something that's catching their eye more than something else? Talk to me as somebody who doesn't do this sort of thing. Um, so when we had to close our doors, we, we pivoted online and we put yeah. every single item that we have in our store online. Obviously, we had to close our doors. Um, eBay was a huge help for us because they, they pretty much reached out to us and said, what can we do to help? Um, we were able to list all of our items and kind of push our store completely online. Um, I mean, collectibles, uh, sports cards, and, and uh, trading cards have kind of seen a huge resurgence mm -hmm. over the last year, year and a half, because people are staying home right. and have a lot more time to play with, you know, with their family and, and kids. So um, we've been able to, to kind of reach a huge new demographic and customer base over the last year, year and a half, despite having to close their doors because of, you know, websites like eBay. Good for you. That's awesome. Well, William, do you have entire sets going back like 10, 20, 30 years? Like, do you have that kind of stuff in stock? Where I can go in and buy like a, some upper deck 98s, <laughs> like a whole box worth. Oh, it's so much fun, dude. Most of those uh, sets are, are gone. Like, I mean, obviously, the older sets are, are in limited supply and high demand. I mean, I have some old stuff, yes, yeah, some, some 90s upper deck basketball, but not much. And, and they're hard to come by now. And uh, yeah, I mean, if, if you're looking for some nostalgic things, we, we definitely have a lot of that. Yeah, I might call you. Okay, so let's in terms of what you got in the store as of this second, what's the most expensive card you got, would you say? Um, I have a, I have a, actually a Vladdy Guerrero uh, oh. rookie card. I mean, he's playing very, very well this year. So um, I know there's a little bit of a glare. But um, no, I mean, Vladimir Guerrero has been a, kind of watching him come up because of his dad. And uh, now that he's playing so well, his his value of his rookie cards have just really skyrocketed. No What's doubt. a fetch? What's a fetch? To own that? Um, <laughs> uh -oh. This card right now is probably about four four or five thousand dollars. What? Yeah, in the Are yeah. you? Yeah, it's oh. been crazy. Yeah, sports cards. Oh, wow. Yeah. William. Wow. Go on. Wow. <laughs> All right. Well, listen. That's just that, that's yeah. just one card. Check out uh, Dolly's Toys and Games. Where can we find you physically, William? Where's the store? And, and where can we go online? Let's uh, the store. It's yeah. Um, it, the store's in Scarborough. Uh, we're at 115 Montezuma Trail. We have a location downtown and also in Mississauga. Check us out online, www.dollies.ca, and then also our eBay store, Dolly's Cards. Awesome. Nice to meet you, William. Love to your brothers who are sleeping in. I'm rubbing it in once more. Thank you so okay. much. Okay, you rock. Come on.